Hello and welcome to another episode of Moose's Gear Goo Review. Today we're doing a knife review of this guy. This is the Spyderco PPT. The Spyderco PPT. So I'm going to read off some stats and uh, we'll get into this knife. So their overall length is 7.4 inches. The blade length is 3.15 inches. The cutting edge um, is 2.7 inches. The blade thickness is 0.125 inches. See there. Um, the blade steel on it is CPM S30V. Uh, it is a full flat grind. It has a plain edge. The handle length is 4.25 inches. The handle material is G10 or black G10. The weight on the knife is 5.2 ounces. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so this knife is called the PPT, and it's it has the PPT because those are the initials of the three designers that collaborated to make this pretty sick looking blade okay so i uh, i got this knife in a trade uh the designers of the knife are fred perrin philip perotti and Sa sacha Thiel. i hope i said that right um so the knife as you can see is just a cool looking knife and i will say this this is a limited sprint run this was considered the all black edition um, of the knife that was put out by spider co uh, the normal version comes with a satin finished blade um and i don't believe it came with this lantern so the black or maybe one of the versions does but the black all black Limited sprint run does come with this lantern. So this is a part of the knife. So if you get it, do not cut this off. Okay, it's going to take away from the collectability. Now going into the blade shape and the blade coating, this is the Thai CN coating. I don't know exactly what that means, but just looking at it, it's not like a painting. It seems almost like it was anodized onto it or parkerized in some way. Um, so it looks pretty cool and it looks pretty durable. Um, the uh, blade shape is kind of a modified Warncliffe, uh, almost sheep's foot type blades, pretty unique. And I actually like that the most on this knife. Uh, there's two segments of jimping on the top spine, there's a longer part there, and then right there above the finger hole. Uh, it has the PPT logo on it. It is made in Taichung, Taiwan. And as you can see, it is S30V. Um, going into the handle, uh, this knife does have some pretty thick liners. And part of that is because of the locking mechanism. They say this is kind of a combination locking mechanism between a liner lock and a frame lock. And as you can see, there is a large cutout uh, just showing like a limited amount of this G10 scale. Uh, which kind of shows that it's almost like a frame lock, but because it has scales on both sides, I guess it's a liner. But either way, it functions in the same way as a liner or frame lock by pushing down and opening. Super smooth action on it. Um, it has these really cool milled out G10 handle scales that are contoured, and I really like the traction that this type of um, milling provides with the G10. Plus it just looks almost kind of primeval primal kind of it just feels gnarly and it makes the knife look really sweet um it does have and all these are like fairly dark to match the motif or almost like a cobalt gray it does have a pocket clip and i've seen this listed as as being a right or left hand carry but when i Upon inspection, I'm not sure if my camera can pick this up. Um, there is a cutout in the one side of the scale so that when it goes over, it actually is flush with the top of the pocket clip. And so if you were to reverse it to the other side, the clip would have to stick above, and there isn't a cutout for that. Uh, but as you can see in its right-hand location, it is a deep carry pocket clip, which is pretty nice. 
Um, other than that, uh, this knife is much more collectible. Uh, I know Blade HQ has run out of these, and I know that other sites are are don't have many of them, and the asking price on like Amazon is over two hundred dollars. Um, so, and like I said, it is the limited sprint run black. So if you get your hands on one of these, you might want to hold on to it because it's pretty pretty collectible. That being said, if you have one of the other models, uh, this is a heavier knife. So for those of you who want to EDC it, just realize that it is a heavier knife. It does fit nice in pocket, um, but you will feel the weight. It's, it's heavier than I would say it needs to be. Um, with that, we're going to quick take a look at it compared to some other knives. We got the Kershaw Knockout. We have the Kershaw Tonto Blur. We also have the Mannix 2 Lightweight. And oh, we'll throw Benchmade in there. Benchmade Osborne. So if we line up the handles with that white line there. You can see that the PPT has a fairly similar blade length to most of these other knives. I'd say these are the medium size knife range, um, but the actual cutting edge is much shorter than the rest of them. Uh, just because it has kind of an extended choil beyond the tip of the scale or the pivot point um, for whatever reason. Um, but it still just has a really cool look. That being said, I will say this knife is much heavier than all these. All these knives, I think there's like a, maybe a four ounce or uh, the rest of these are around four or under or even under three ounces or about three ounces. Remember, this is like five and a half ounces, so pretty heavy. That being said, let's check out the blade thickness. It's about the same as the Mannix 2. Uh, blade thickness, I'd say the knockout's just a hair thicker, but it might be the same. Handle thickness, uh, the PPT is much thicker. Uh, blade thickness, I'd say the knock or the blur is has a thicker blade, and it's about the same as the Osborne. That being said, we got one last quick test, and I'm trying to be quick with this one, and that is the ugly brown glove test. So I do the ugly brown glove test just to make sure that a knife stays in hand if the traction's correct for anyone who uses a glove, whether they're working or um, it's cold outside. Uh, also to see if it's open, uh, accessible, if you can open it with a glove. So got these cloth yard gloves. Um, I'll say right now the handle scales with that milling actually is pretty has a decent traction, you know, I can still grip into it. The thumb hole is accessible, and the grip is actually pretty nice in hand. I can't really access the jimping because it's flush with the liners here, so I wouldn't say that's that great, but once I get to this upper jimping, uh, it actually locks in pretty well. Closing, it has that big flap or that scale for closing, and opening, boom. So, does it pass? Heck yes. Passes the ugly brown glove test. That being said, I want to say thank you to all of you. Check this out. Check out my other videos, my other subscription unboxings. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Um, like, subscribe, comment. Check out other videos in the upper right-hand corner. Thank you. Have a great day. Check out some of these knives.